What's up guys? We are on site in a library that I just built. Really unique situation here. We had to use, create some 10 foot plywood for these 10 foot tall bookcases. That is something that can be a little bit tricky because plywood only comes in eight foot lengths. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what I did to get this nice looking 10 foot tall bookcase with only eight foot plywood. We've got these bookcases assembled. I've got 10 units total to build. Got a few more going on over here. As you'll see on my workbench here, I've already got the sides of some of these bookcases done. This is almost 10 foot long. So how did we go about creating this long piece of plywood? If you look closely here, you'll see we've got a splice right here. And for those of you who saw my Lamello video, you know what this is all about. So I'm gonna show you how I went through this process of joining these together. With 10 units, that was 20 total pieces to join together. I really needed to come up with a fast, effective, productive way to do this that would yield a great result. Here on my workbench, I've got my pieces laid out that I need to join together. As you can see, I've got a full eight foot piece here and then about a two foot piece here. How are we gonna put these together so that we get a nice joint, nice connection? I've done things before where I'd use multiple clamps to pull something together. That's obviously not gonna be a good option whenever you've got 20 pieces that you need to glue together. To do that, I would put, take one long clamp like this, and then I would take another long clamp in the opposite direction, put them together like that, crank them down, pull a joint together. That works in certain situations, but on this, not gonna be an effective method. A lot of you guys probably saw my video review a while back on the Lamello Zeta. It uses these fancy Clamex connectors that you can insert into the joint and then rotate this little hex screw there and it'll pull everything together. So as I was working through this whole problem in my mind, thinking how am I gonna do all these pieces this was one of the first tools that came to mind to try to pull all these together. I did end up using it, but I kind of added some other components to this as well. The thing about these Clamax connectors is yes, they'll pull the joint together, but they don't really create a lot of strength. And my fear was that as I put these together, if I had any kind of flex on this piece, the joint would end up breaking. So that is where I started thinking about using the domino, which you'll see here. Let me just pull up my assortment of dominoes. Here we've got all these different size connector options. Something like this is going to add a lot of strength to a plywood joint. There's no way that you can break this. So it just adds a lot more strength than a biscuit. Just to demonstrate what I ended up doing um, I put a couple of these dominoes in each joint here to give it some stiffness. And as you can see, you know, once it's glued up, it's very strong. And I don't have to worry about the joint breaking if it gets stressed a little bit. Just really added a lot of strength and I've been very happy with that. So let me show you how I actually went about the assembly process over here. For my final assembly, I ended up opting to use two dominoes on the ends. These are eight millimeter dominoes and then a Clamex connector in the center to pull everything together. I like the idea of having the Clamex in the center because it would give a little bit of clamping pressure, but it would also ensure that the joint couldn't come apart after I turned that screw in there. So let's go ahead and mortise these and show you how it goes together.
Okay, so it's glue up time here. Go ahead, um, spread a generous amount of glue on here. Make sure we've got a nice wet joint all the way across. Now I might be a little bit OCD here, but I always like to make sure that my dominoes are well coated with glue. Put a nice coating all the way around them there. That way we know we're getting good glue coverage. I put one drop of glue down in the mortise. Just kind of set it on top of there and then usually need to use a mallet. Using the mallet also ensures that that glue that was at the bottom of that mortise squeezes up around the domino so we get really nice coverage all around. Go ahead and just get a nice amount of glue on the other side here as well. Now we'll go ahead and insert our Clamex connectors into both sides. Get it pushed in nice and even. You want to make sure with your Clamex that you always orient the hex bolt so that it's accessible from the hole that we just drilled over here. So we'll push that in like so. Now here's the tricky part, and a lot of you have probably found this out. Whenever you do a glue joint like this, where you've got domino connectors, it just doesn't want to go together. And even for this Clamex connector, for me to use this and tighten this down enough to push all of this glue joint out is gonna be pretty difficult. So what I found that I like to do is I'll use a Bessie clamp and reverse it. So I take it from this orientation to this orientation. And as you see here, I've got a block of one by screwed onto my workbench. We're gonna use that to push against. So I'll position this here. Now I'm gonna take a couple of Festool quick clamps. I'm gonna drop them down here in my dog holes like so so that we've got this piece anchored down nice and tight. You will find that sometimes your ends aren't perfectly aligned. I like to just take another clamp, throw it on here, and it kind of pulls the piece into alignment. So now you'll see we've got this big old gap right here. It's not wanting to push together. I'm gonna to use my clamp over here and start pushing. Now watch this squeeze out come. So now we've got a really tight joint here all the way across. I'm gonna wipe that off. I can access my clamp right here, give it a good twist. So now the Clamex connector is pulling this together. So guys, I found this system to work really well. Having this Bessie clamp down here on the end to push things together is really key to getting that nice tight joint that's gonna sand out and be invisible later on. The Clamex connector's got a decent amount of clamping power, but not nearly enough to push all of that tight bond one glue to get a really good squeeze out. So this system worked great. I will say that in my deep desire to create great YouTube content, I accidentally flipped this piece upside down so you'll probably notice in the video, I have marks on one side of this piece, marks on the opposite side of the other piece. Thankfully, this was just for demonstration purposes. I've already actually assembled my 20 other pieces. So in real life, that would have been a real bummer to put this together and have it the wrong way. So pop that clamp off, come down here and remove my quick clamps. And here you'll see if you take a close up of this joint, we've got lines on one side there and then lines on the other side here. Guys, hope you're enjoying the video. There's a couple other things in this library that I wanted to point out. Obviously, I've talked a lot about joining this plywood together. You'll see up here, you really can't even notice the splice right here. We got three dominoes in there. It sanded out really nicely. It's gonna paint up really well. I always sand with a hard pad on my Festool sander so it's silky smooth. I also wanted to point out that you're gonna have the same issues with your backer plywood and you have to splice that somewhere. Uh, being that I'm using quarter inch, obviously you can't really use joinery and that would be very time consuming also to do that. 
So I opted to put my plywood splice up here across the top and then I just added a trim piece going all the way across. Kind of gives it a little bit of accent all the way around the room. But the other reality is these bookshelves are gonna be covered in books and you're really not even gonna be able to see that trim piece whenever this is actually all done. So overall, everything just tied together really well. We've got that trim piece hiding the plywood splice. You can see my splices where we joined the eight foot plywood into 10 foot lengths went together really well. Great results, I'm really happy with how this whole thing came together. Let's talk about the Clamax connector hole quick. Now, these pieces that I'm putting together that I've got right here, on these bookshelves, one side is not gonna be exposed. So the hole is not a big deal at all. I did, however, have three end panels that were gonna be visible where I really didn't want this hole. So what I did there is instead of using a Clamex connector, I used three dominoes. So in place of my center Clamex, I had three dominoes in the joint like so. In that case, what I would do, I'd plop my clamp down here, tighten it down. Let's just pretend we're assembling this. Push the joint together get that nice squeeze out with my dominoes in here. And then I used pinch dogs. So I don't want any exposed holes. So take a pinch dog like this, and in the end of your plywood, hammer that thing in. Now you do have to be really careful whenever you're using pinch dogs on plywood because it will split. You cannot just whale on this thing and put it in super deep. But if you're using your clamp to push the joint together and, and it's doing almost all of the work, the pinch dog is really just holding it where it's at. So you only have to hammer it in a little bit and you're good to go. So in all of my exposed end panels where I didn't want this Clamex hole to be visible, that's what I did. I used pinch dogs assemble all these, let them sit overnight so the glue is nice and cured. And as you see here in front of you, I've got all of these pieces done and they're very strong. So here's my line, you can see the Clamex hole. You can do whatever you want with these. It's, it's, not, it's not gonna break, it's gonna hold up for the assembly process and uh, it's worked really well. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. This is an issue I encounter fairly often where I have to use the board stretcher, where I have to make either one by material or plywood longer. This technique worked great. It was fast, effective. And as you can see here, I'm getting these bookcases built. Can't wait to get everything finished in this room, installed, and see how it turns out.